This topic today is how much liver can we live without? It's kind of a weird question. So let's just say, how much liver do you need to function normally? How much liver do we really need to maintain normal liver function? And this is pretty bizarre because you only need 25%. So the liver is really robust, and apparently we have about 75% of the liver that acts as a buffer, and we can live without that if necessary. Of course, it's not the ideal situation, but we actually don't need much liver to maintain normal liver function. Now, this is good and bad news because sometimes people think, wow, I can pretty much eat what I want because I don't need much of my liver, so I'm just going to push the envelope and ride the wave, and then when I need a new liver, I'll just get a transplant. Well, that's one way to look at things. I don't think it's probably the best way um, because there's a transplant list that you have to get on, which takes a long time. But as a plan B, they do have another option. It's called living liver donation. So you just talk your friend or family member into donating some of their liver, like 50% of the liver, so then that way you actually can get a transplant. It's a little bit different because you're not getting the whole liver, you're getting partial liver and it has to regrow back. But that comes with two problems. Number one, you have to find a friend or a family member which has the same blood type as you do and they're willing to give it up. Now the other problem you might uh, run into is that um, you might have to take anti-liver um, rejection drugs so there's usually antibodies that are going to develop, that are going to attack this new liver. Uh, they involve usually steroids, so you have to take those. They have side effects. But if you can overcome those side effects, what's very fascinating is that the liver can regenerate at an accelerated rate. Most of the liver regeneration will occur in two to four weeks after getting this transplant, which is amazing. The liver is the only visceral organ that can regenerate. It takes a beating and it just keeps coming back. Now, you probably have seen some of my other videos on YouTube. And I always like to just give you some important tips to maintaining liver function. Just because some people need to be reminded over and over and over. Number one, you want to avoid the triggers that will cause liver damage in the first place. Of course, alcohol, junk food, sugar are all at the top of the list. Number two, you want to establish a new eating plan. And I'm talking about healthy keto. Now, I actually have a book that describes the four body types. And the diet that you would most benefit from would be the diet for the liver body type. So you can actually look at that. Intermittent fasting is going to be essential for the reduction of inflammation, also the stimulation of stem cells that will help you regenerate liver tissue. There are also some really important key nutrients that you need to take. Vitamin D, roughly about 20,000 I use to keep your inflammation really low. Because it's really the inflammation that creates the damage from liver problems in general. Tocotrienols, which is a type of vitamin E, which is very important in preventing a fatty liver developing into an inflamed liver, which eventually develops into a fibrotic liver or a liver with scar tissue. Bile salts are really important. As you lose liver function, you also lose your ability to make bile. So by taking bile salts, you can also help slow down the fibrosis in the liver because bile salts are anti-fibrotic. And the last thing, take probiotics. There's a huge connection between your microbes in your gut and liver function. I did an entire video on this. I'll put a link down below. All right, there you have it. And that's all I have to say about the liver today. Thanks for watching. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy 
anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide, Major Updates on the Body Types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to The Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning, it goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, a uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you within 45 minutes learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.